In 1931, Father Jimmy Tompkins persuaded Bostonians Edward Filene and Roy Bergengrand of the acute need for credit unions in Nova Scotia. Bergengrand gave up his holiday in 1932 to visit Nova Scotia and help Angus L. Macdonald's Liberal government pass the legislation that would govern the creation and operations of all Nova Scotia credit unions. Many study club and kitchen meetings were held in Antigonish and across rural Nova Scotia with the help of Tompkins, A.B. Macdonald, and several others. And in 1933, the first credit unions were able to start receiving their charters. In the two years that followed, there was an explosion of credit unions starting throughout Nova Scotia. Other Atlantic provinces soon took notice, as did the rest of English-speaking Canada. Regular hard-working folks who could not obtain credit from banks in those days found a place where they could now borrow money for their boats, tractors, barns, and homes. And the rest, as they say, is history. Since then, credit unions across the country continue to pursue a tradition of innovation. Today, we share a proud history of doing just that. And today, we are making a major impact for our members across the country. We offer a full range of retail banking services to millions of Canadians who have access to our 4,500 surcharge-free ATMs, the largest surcharge-free ATM network in the country. Collectively, Canadian credit unions generate over $6.5 billion in economic impact. And most importantly, we continue to give back to the communities we serve. Father Moses Cody used to like to remind the people who attended his study clubs that the people can do 10 times what they think they can. We think Father Jimmy and Moses Cody would be very impressed today. <laughs>